Hey, what's up, everyone? I wanted to make this quick video. Uh, President Biden has come up with new executive order for immigration. There are lots and lots of changes to policies and proposals and things like that. Again, this is basically Biden telling his immigration team that, hey, we need to, you know, uh, think think this through. We are like, we need to make changes to our policies and laws for immigration. And here are my recommendation. And he has given some strict deadlines and timeline, like from 30 months, 30 days to like six months. And, and like there are a lot of changes for like people who are in STEM degree, especially in AI field. So Rajiv Ji, who's our immigration lawyer, he will like, yeah, we, have, we met and he goes through lots of details on like what exactly and how it impacts us, like for students who are on F1 visa, J1 visa, H1B, O1, a uh, lot of good news for entrepreneurs and founders, good news for people who are waiting on green card and how they can change status and start their own company. So a lot of good stuff. Please watch the entire video. If you have any further question on this topic, please let me know in the comment section and we'll make another video and we'll probably do a live session to answer any of the questions. So here we go. Enjoy the video. There are some things here that could be really helpful. Some things that I am like, meh, until I mm. see something come out, I don't want to say, oh, this is great. But it is a huge step in the right direction. Okay. Mm. Mm. So the first part that says within 90 days, give us a plan to attract talent from outside. That's fine. But then again, within 90 days, streamline processing of visa petitions and applications okay that means both things both uscis and state department need to get off their duff and make make sure that people who are now traveling to the united states to work study or conduct research so that means h1s o1s j1s f1s all these could be affected and maybe mm -hmm. they they might have to frontline these applications now that's good and that's bad mm -hmm. why is it bad if you don't have your resources streamlined other visa categories could suffer mm -hmm. okay so we'll see what happens with this but certainly it is good not only for people who are in ai but ai or other critical and emerging technologies and there is a whole list of them huge list of them Pretty much anything to do with technology, engineering, and science is covered. Mm. Now, not everything, but pretty much everything. So mm. I like the idea of streamlining visa processing. And, and what does streamlining mean? Streamlining means that you're going to get your act together. <laughs> okay. Got it. So enough yeah. of sitting on your duff doing nothing. Get mm. your butts moving. Take mm. care of business. Mm. Okay. Nice. So, what is more important is it also gives you an inkling of the way the administration is thinking. Mm -hmm. My own suspicion is you will find getting student visas as well as J1 visas in the critical technologies list a lot easier, mm. especially in graduate studies. Mm. That's mm. my suspicion. Mm. And what does that mean? That means when you go for visa stamping, your application, just because you happen to be on, you know, material science research, this research, that research, any of those lists, applied mm. or pure, you are going to find them. Now, I'll post links to the technology list also. And okay. these keep getting revised. The last one revision was, I think, towards the end of 2022. Mm. So there's a whole bunch of technologies, not just AI, but AI is one of them. All subfields of AI, machine mm. learning, deep learning, da da da. Data science, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Then we come on down. Um, within 120 days, domestic visa renewal program. Um, and you see what they are saying is visa renewal program. I keep telling people that what we are expecting in 2024 is if you need to extend your visa, for example, hmm. you came to USA on a master's degree yeah. and your visa has expired. Hmm. But you went on to PhD. Now, instead of going to India to renew your visa, you get it renewed here in the United States. That way, when nice. you travel, you yeah. piece of money. So I know a whole bunch of young men and women who want to go home and get married. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm telling yeah. you, that's, that's a fact. 
So I that actually is true. have that is true. That. Yeah. You know, I can't guarantee that you will get your visa stamping. But mm. imagine mm. now that when you go from here, you already have mm. your visa stamping done. Mm. That means you can actually enjoy the pani puri in your own wedding. Nice. Yes. So, and and is this only for J1 or is this I for like uh, Okay. But more importantly, before we go into the next part of the video, I want to quickly talk about Implify. Implify is a mind-blowing company and a tool and an app for immigrants. If you are coming to United States or if you are in United States, you have to be using <laughs> Implify. Uh you know how we are so bad with managing our documents and organizing documents. This is a tool which can keep handy which can keep everything in track for you uh, it not only just manages the document but it is like an ultimate platform to remind you for the expiration and all of that i just made a video on that you you can go and check it out but i'll put the link in the description you have a 3 months free trial and if you consider getting like a full premium plan then 65% off on my code udj again it is an absolute must have tool for immigrants Uh, they also have services for lawyers and tax consultants and and all the fun stuff again i i w- i wouldn't say that it's not important for you to get married but from the business angle of the united states now imagine i have a phd student working in my lab he or she is devoting x number of hours every week to my research when mm-hmm. they go home i the principal investigator in the lab or i the head of r&d need to know my guy is coming back or my uh, my female worker is coming back right right so this should apply and would apply it used to h1 l1 and now they are saying we want to include f1 and j1 as well mm. would they include o1 i think so mm. okay mm. so what biden has said within um you know x number of days whatever was up there give me a plan to get this implemented okay then uh, again for j1 visas they are saying reassess how many of these people who are working in critical technologies uh, and look this is a little bit more ad- more um expanded than just the critical technologies list it says including those skills that are critical to the united states mm. right So it's not just the technology list. You have to kind of look at the nuance. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, how would this work out? Why is this important? Because often J J one people get stipends. They get paid while they research. The downside is they have to, at the end of their project, they have to go home for two years, which is called the two year home residency requirement, also called two twelve e requirement, or um, they have to get a waiver somehow. and getting waivers can be quite painful mm-hmm. department of defense has a waiver program department of education has a waiver program physicians have their pro- programs through health and human services and through state governments so there's different programs but waivers can be problematic okay so now if you look at the j1 category again in paragraph c within 180 days of the date of this order expand the categories of non immigrants who can qualify for j1 research scholars and f1 students okay mm. consider initiating a rule making to expand the category so because they want to expand the stem categories uh, to expand the categories of non immigrants who qualify for domestic visa renewal program this is the same sorry this is the part they are still talking about uh, somebody was asking mm. me on my linkedin page they said um, hey rajiv are we um, are we going to get visa renewed only if you are if if we are in one of these technologies yeah the answer yeah. is probably not because mm. if they open it for h1 they'll open it for all h1s whether you are mm. in history or you are teaching i don't know mm. developmental biology or you are teaching mm. um, electronic engineering mm. it will it should be open to all that is my guess yeah then um, attract top talent um, that's just theory then keep coming down there are some things that are important they want us to do policy changes for o1a eb1a and eb1b why is mm. this important think about it that many times if you are an applied researcher 
it is very difficult for you to qualify for these categories which are very heavy, heavily tilted towards the academicians. We've done a bunch of cases for people in um, applied science, sciences, people who are director of research, R&D engineers uh, in private companies, but it's always iffy. I never know mm. going in what's going to happen to these cases. Okay. Mm. Uh, what they are saying is, um, first of all, we want you to start thinking about policy changes and not only um, um, O1A and EB1, um, also for startup founders in AI and other critical and emerging technologies using the international entrepreneur rule. Now, this is very important for countries other than India. For India, this may not be that important because this has certain limitations, time limitations beyond which you cannot go. But of mm. course, you keep applying for H-1B every year. You are, you are here as an entrepreneur on entrepreneurial parole, which requires you to raise a certain amount of capital, own a certain amount of equity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this could work. Um, there were policy changes made already by the government on O1A and EB1 cases. Okay, mm. it was done a few mm. months ago when Biden administration sent memos out to the agencies. So this executive order is uh, far more reaching than the previous memos which were sent on ad hoc basis. I don't think the government is going to change anything much in O1A and EB1 um, policy, but at least it tells us the Biden administration wants the government to look at STEM cases with a little bit more of a reasonable look. Okay, mm. so then we come on to, they are say, still talking about modernize H-1B program um, to adjust. The, this is the part that is very important. So mm. that part about, you know, AI, other critical uh, emerging technologies, I'm not sure that really helps us. But they must continue, they must consider rulemaking to adjust status as a lawful permanent resident. This pro, this was, this idea was floated a couple of times. But think mm. about it this way. If mm. this passes, okay, mm. some of the formats in which this idea has been presented in the past is this. If you have been waiting for a green card for one year, you pay $1,500 extra and you can file for adjustment of status, even though the dates are not current. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay? Yeah, that's interesting. So what does that do? After 180 days, you can change jobs. Mm. Your aging out children will probably be protected. Mm. These are far-reaching mm. implications. And if we are going in the direction of uh, entrepreneurs, these guys could start their own companies. Yeah, yeah. Once your I-485 has been filed, I-140 is approved, waiting 180 days, you can start your own company with something mm. like this in place. So this mm. really cuts out Congress. Congress is never going to do anything, okay? Because whatever... The Democrats say Republicans are automatically against it. And whatever right. the Republicans are say, Democrats don't like. Mm. So mm. we're not going to see anything coming out of Congress to increase the visa numbers. None of that. Not mm. unless we, the Democrats, win the White House, um, the uh, Senate, and the House of Representatives. That's the only chance for immigration to go through. Yeah. But this is a good way to find practical solutions without having to involve Congress in it. Right. Mm. Mm. Then let's see below that point F. They are saying use your discretionary authority. Who? Secretary of Homeland Security, which is USCIS, CBP, uh, and um, the Secretary of uh, State, which is visa issuance, which is the mm. yeah. Use your discretionary authority. In other words, wherever there's a room for you to decide, decide in favor of the STEM applicant. Mm. Mm. And this goes all through. And it's interesting that they are always mentioning special skins in AI, but then, you know, other, uh, other emerging, emerging technologies. technologies. Because yeah. this order, if you look at the rest of the order, it is heavily focused on regulating AI. Mm. Mm. Okay. When you regulate AI, Part of that is regulating immigration to aid our AI. Mm. The reason um, United States has a fire under its behind now because China is overtaking in some areas. Mm. Okay, mm. In, I think they are ahead in quantum computing. I could be wrong, 
but I had I keep track of all these news in all of the emerging technologies. Mm. Anywhere, you know, metallurgy, physics, um, biology, all these technologies. And I see there is an edge. Uh, some ways Europe has an edge in some technologies. So USA is like, oh, wait a minute, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, this is the only thing we had an edge in. Manufacturing is gone. We don't have an edge in manufacturing. Um, so the only thing we have an edge is in STEM. And we are losing yeah. that because of our really bad policies. Mm. So mm. let's see, there's anything else? There was actually one more thing, Schedule A. Keep going down. What happened to Schedule A? Okay, go up again. I missed Schedule A somewhere. So let me tell you what Schedule A is. So they mm. said um, within 45 days, look for the word RFI. Hit Control F, RFI. Oh, there's Schedule. RFI. Uh, hold on, hold on. No, RFI space. Yeah. So this is the one I missed. Okay. Within 45 days, the Secretary of the Labor shall publish a request for information. And this is to classify some jobs as Schedule A. What does that mean? Mm. Schedule A, if some job has been put on Schedule A, that means it is understood there are not enough U.S. workers for this job. That means you don't have to go through the labor certification process. You directly file the I-140. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. That saves the employer thousands of dollars of money. They don't have to advertise. You still have to yeah. go through the prevailing wage, which takes seven damn months uh, or eight or nine damn months. But still, it, it's, it's a big, big benefit. Right now, only nurses and uh, physical therapists have that advantage. So if we, mm. are, if we see some of our jobs on Schedule A, and that means our green card gets that much easier. Mm, mm, so there are some exciting mm, things, um, but yeah. um, a lot of it will depend upon how the government implements these programs. And mm. I think um, if I find that the government is not following this policy, I, I think we should make a fuss about it and uh, float out open letters to the administration saying, mm, mm. So we have to keep tabs on this. Let's see how it goes. Overall, right. uh, a very good idea. Overall, a step in the right direction. Mm, yeah. And uh, just take one step back. Uh, so Biden said like, hey, uh, he put out an executive order to all the um, immigration related authorities that, hey, we need to get, get together and our act. And here are the things you need to work on over the period of like next, uh, you know, 30 Excellent. days to, uh, yeah, uh, six months. And now they're going to work on this and then come back with like, hey, here's what we think we should do. Then, you know, these changes will happen. Is that right? That's that's precisely oh. it. So what will happen next is some memoranda will be exchanged within organizations. There'll be meetings. There'll be working committees formed between the State Department and Department of Homeland Security to uh, get their act together. Sorry for one more interruption. I want to quickly talk about my newsletter. If you haven't already subscribed, link is in the description as well. We send out all this update in the newsletter weekly basis on every Wednesday. So you don't want to miss out on these important updates. If you don't have time to watch videos, you can watch the text version of it, which includes a lot more links and depths to all this content. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Now that you enjoy the video. There might nice. be a request okay. for more funding by the State Department, mm -hmm. um, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. And then all this budget has to be approved. So there's all sorts of things that are going to happen over the next few weeks. The yeah. least amount I saw, I saw was 48 days. The most I saw, saw was 540 days. I don't know why mm -hmm. 540 days. Is it two years? <laughs> no. No. I don't know what no. 540 is such an odd number, <laughs> but I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, so. maybe it's like a year and a half, um, but uh, is it eight okay. Years? And is this like, it seems like the timing of this uh, is like right before the, the election. No, so is, elections is, are still a ways off. Is it? There are two kinds of people running this government, educated or un un uneducated. When the uneducated people win elections, they don't really care about what happens to the, to the U United States. They are looking into all these areas, you know, coal and all that. I'm not saying that don't protect jobs, but know where your where your edge is, okay, and don't lose that edge. 
because mm. already I do not think that United States is considered to be um, an uh, undisputed leader of the free world mm. as we mm. used to be. Yeah. There are a lot yeah. of issues already with the leadership. There are countries challenging um, this leadership. So I think what has happened is when you have an educated government, they realize they are falling behind. And as usual, government is about five to 10 years behind where they should have been. This is something they should have been doing 10 years earlier. Right. Remember I told yeah. you in one of, the, one of our conversations that they had no um, H1Bs for data science. Mm. Data science was mm. not considered to be. And so we had to look at different specialty occupation subcategories. Is this guy more mm. like a system analyst? more like a developer, mm. uh, more like mm. an operational research analyst, more, more like a statistician. So we had to put them into all these different categories, which is kind of silly because data yeah. science is data science. It yeah. could yeah. involve yeah. components of all these things. Right. And, uh, and so does this change if the government changes? I hope not, but yes, <laughs> it does. Because okay. now if yeah. they if they promulgate regulations, not just policy, uh, for example, for adjustment of status, that's a lot harder to get rid of. Mm. Mm. Because deregulation requires a justification. You can't just mm. deregulate just because you don't like a regulation. So if right. Republicans win the White House, they can't just come in and say, oh, we don't like like this. Mm. They have to provide some link between their need to deregulate and um, you know some cogent policy. It's not mm. just because I woke up one fine morning, I decided this is how it's going to be. And mm. that was, sorry, sir, that was Nero. He was the emperor of Rome. He could do it. You are not the emperor. We can challenge mm. you. Mm. Mm. So so, uh, so this is kind of good news for a lot of immigrants. Yeah, kind uh, of good news, but I want to see <laughs> the ones that I like the best, uh, that I want to see where they go is the 485. Mm. That's one of them then the Schedule mm. A is exciting. And I mm. also like the idea that they are going to uh, be more reasonable in F and J and H1B and all kinds of work visas, O1s, when it comes to STEM technologies. Because mm. part of being reasonable is, for example, data science is an integral part of AI. Yeah. So uh, if, you, yeah. If, you can, if you do not understand data science and the statistics mm. and the uh, logic behind how we arrive from point X to point Y, okay, uh, it's very difficult. I mean, you could probably get around data science, I guess, if you were just doing the development work. For example, if you are just designing a neural network, but you would still have to know something. Mm. And I mm. think these are so so intimately connected. You can't say well, yeah. not really specialty occupation. What nonsense. Mm. Okay. So mm. I think it's a step in the right direction. And I hope they should make it mandatory for all adjudications officers to take basic courses in computer science. I, mm. I'm not saying you become a computer science expert, <laughs> but do a six-week program so that you understand what is what at a basic level. Mm. Because I mm. feel sometimes that I'm talking to complete idiots. These are smart people. Yeah. Adjudication yeah. officers are not idiots. But right. their right. lack of knowledge is very really, really poor. I remember mm. a time when I was hired to provide an opinion why were 18 cases by a Fortune 50 companies, um, a company denied on an H-1B? You know what mm. the reason was? Their job title was architect, and the government said, you don't have a degree in architecture. This was not an <laughs> architect as in building, building. This was a system architect. They said, well, how do, what do we do? I said, on computer systems architect, and you will win the cases. <laughs> <laughs> the real thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wow. Like these cases, saying you don't have a degree in architecture. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Good. Um, I'm I'm sure we'll be talking and providing more updates as as these policies develop and change, and we get updates. But uh, this is this is good. Yeah. Any other final words of wisdom? Live long and prosper. <laughs> uh, you just said oh i guess you didn't say about living long but you said like refuse to be old <laughs> <laughs> yeah I told right. you that. getting old is highly overrated refuse to get old <laughs> yeah. yeah all right thank you rajivji we'll talk soon uh, and uh, Take yeah care. thanks everyone